direction here, and his oppo is Dan Schwartz. So Dan fly, likes to fly alone. Rod no, likes to quietly walk alone. Yes, much better. So I'd like you to put your hands together for these two people who are going to talk to you about, and I hope it's simple because we don't understand this thing, <coughs> cryptocurrencies. So welcome, Ron Carty and Dan Schwartz. Okay, thank you. As, as Dan referred, we are often referred to as the dynamic duo. Uh, Dan is the dynamic one, mine the sneaky one around the back, all right? But uh, thanks for that was talk. As I understand it, last week people um, asked us to do a talk on crypto, and that's really where we're going. And part of the dynamic thing is uh, we're going to split this talk into two parts. But the first part is going to be what I call the, the wrong part, which is for uh, average people to understand crypto. I believe the importance of getting involved in crypto at a, at a certain level. Uh, the other part is for those that want to get involved deeply, want to get involved and understand more, that's when I call up my partner. So uh, that's really where we're going to go. So uh, I've got a small presentation here, right? and let's just uh, kick off by introducing Dan and myself. We have a company, consultancy company, that operates out of Singapore. Right? And as a company, we're involved with uh, really helping not just individuals, but companies as well. We help them get set up. Uh, there's a lot of companies that want to go into the crypto space. Uh, we provide consulting to allow companies to set up their own tokens, etc. So that's really our background. But what I want to do is press this button here and talk about one of my favourite sayings. And I, I, we all know Richard Branson, but as it says on the theme there, that if you get offered an opportunity, if, if somebody offers you an amazing opportunity and you're not sure if you can do it, say yes and then learn how to do it later. And that's been my mantra, my personal mantra for a long time. And that really is how I became involved in crypto, right? By accident, I think six years ago, I think five or six years ago, um, I got invited to talk to a company that was setting up a, operations in Asia, and it was involved in the crypto space. I have got no background in crypto. But like everything, I go and I have a look and I have a listen. And to cut a long story short, I got involved, I think I was vice president of sales for this crypto company that was operating in Asia. Right. Still don't understand a thing about crypto, but I do know about sales in my background. And so within about two weeks, I flew over to Manila and I met Mr. Dan, you know, Dan the man, who started to beg me and educate me in terms of crypto. Interesting, in about three visits to, Man to Manila, I met Filipinos. Now, bear in mind, Filipinos are supposed to have, well, I don't know, I don't know how many of us have been to the Philippines. It's not the most... It's not the richest country in the world. I sat down with sessions where average Filipinos were doing $10,000 transactions in Bitcoin. This is six years ago. I sat in a little condo with five people here, ordinary Filipinos, and another one on the screen there doing a presentation, and I watched them pay thousands of dollars to join crypto. That was my learning. So I think, well, if they can get involved, why shouldn't I get involved? And with that as my mantra, right, I got involved and bit by bit I learned sufficiently that I'm happy with my presence in crypto. I'm not a crypto man, I'm not a techie man, but I have to say crypto has been kind to me in the last six years. When I got involved, what was, yeah, it has. You know, what was Bitcoin when I got involved? It was about 600 ish. $600. Nowadays it's what, 50, like just right, just plummeted to $53,000, right? So I can say that crypto has been kind to me. And I think, and I've done talk before, you know that. And I say to everyone, I've said for, to everybody I meet for six years, get involved in Bitcoin. For whatever level you're comfortable, in my mind it's remiss of anybody not to get involved. You know, and that's always my, my recommendation. At what level you get involved? is up to you. But a lot of people think you have to put $53,000 in to get involved in Bitcoin. You can get involved in, you know, I've got to ask that because I don't know the, the ins and outs. What's the minimum you can get involved in time in Bitcoin? Is it about 2,000 bucks, 3,000 bucks? 2,000 bucks. 2,000 bucks. You can get involved in Bitcoin. Now I know people in this room will spend more in a meal one night, or on the weekend in the bar on drinks, and it's gone. 
But if you put 2,000 baht into crypto and forgot about it, where's it going to be in two years, three years, one year? We don't know. It might be zero. But it also might be $100,000. And as you probably know, Dan and I do a regular weekly podcast now on crypto. I can't believe it. My life's changed. I'm now a crypto man. I do crypto podcasts. Well, how about that? But you know, they ask me, uh, you know, what do I think Bitcoin will be? And I say, well, that's interesting. Dan, what do you think? I always bounce it to Dan the man. But Dan suggests it's going to be, what, 150000 by the end of the year? $150,000 by the end of the year. Maybe. It may be zero. But I always believe in having a punt. And for people like us, see, there's a lot of people out there that look at crypto, look at Bitcoin, but really they've got no way of knowing what it is. But a little talk like this, and listen to something like Dan, in my mind, should open the door for everybody just to have a punt. What's 2,000 baht, 3,000 baht, or $5,000, whatever suits. So my recommendation, regardless of whether my presentation makes sense or not, my recommendation to everybody, including my family, which have ignored me for six years, I have to say, is get involved in Bitcoin. Buy a little bit. Let it sit there. Right? And I'm going to show that. This talks in two parts. I'm going to show very quickly how to get involved in Bitcoin, because I think a lot of people just don't know. And then Dan's going to come up and talk about how, how you can use Bitcoin. But look, Bitcoin is really three parts. Now, the first part is decide to get involved, right? which I did. I kept my fingers crossed and I jumped in. But decide to get involved. The second thing is learn how to use it. And the third thing is you want is participate in trading. Now, I do all three, but the trading bit is the wrong trading. I am not a trader. I am not a trader. But I do keep it on my phone every day. I've got it here. I see 53,000. I think, hmm, not bad. I'll draw out 3,000 put it somewhere else. And then it goes up another 4,000. I think, oh, I'll draw out another 1,000. That's my idea of trading. I don't really trade between coins or tokens. I have them. I've got a portfolio over the years. Uh, because a lot of the work we do uh, for clients, we get paid in tokens. We get paid in cryptocurrencies. So I've got a little wallet somewhere. Now Dan's going to talk about exchange. I've got exchanges somewhere with tokens and coins in. How it works, I don't know. All I know is they're there. And it keeps going up. So that's why I like to say to everybody, get involved in crypto at the level that suits you. That's my message to everybody. I'll never change that. right? And uh, I wish my brother was sitting here because he hasn't done it for six years or so. Right? Okay, so let's have a look now. Getting involved in crypto in Thailand is very, very easy. There's an organization called coins.co.th. Log in there, and it's very, very simple. I'm going to run through. I wasn't going to do it, but then Dan said, look, just take a little bit of time and just show how. I'll put it all on the screen first, okay? Oh, no, let me go back, okay? So coins.co.th, it's very simple. That opens <laughs> it. This is how easy it is, all right? Uh, you just click create an account, all right? You put in your details, whatever. And the good thing is you can put in your phone or your email address. That's your choice. And the reason they put that in is because every time you, this is the security part, every time you open up your coins account, there's a two-step verification either on your phone or email. For me, it's easier on my phone. I've got my phone with me all the time so I can do it easy. Right? So phone or email address, right? Right? click create, right? check the verification code, Enter your name as in your ID and your passport. That's important because what's good about the coins account, you can actually link it to your Thai bank account. Whatever bank account in Thailand, you can link it. Now that means you can draw down to Thai bank. I'm going to talk about this in a moment. So when I first started crypto, I used to call it money in the air. Yeah, there was my month. That was, that was my, I did training sessions on money in the air. Can you believe that? But, you know, this is money in the air and it's up there. I really didn't know how to bring it down. Now it's so much easier. So coins, you can link it to your bank account. Uh, you, you can drop it down whenever you like. I'll talk about that again in a moment. Okay, once you've opened up your account, you've got your wallet there. Uh, you've got your wallet details. It shows you the amount of coins you've got. Everything's displayed. Uh, you can also have a separate Thai wallet. So you can have X amount of crypto here. And then you can also convert X amount to a Thai butt instantly. Okay. Now, what you do with that Thai butt is up to you. You can leave it in your coins 
tie up wallet to buy more <coughs> more crypto, more Bitcoin later. Or you can drop it down to your whatever bank, your classic or your bank or bank, whatever. So currently I've got two wallets in the end. Right? I've got my crypto wallet and I've got my time bank account wallet. And you can play around accordingly. Very, very easy. Right? You've got your complete transaction history. I've, I've deleted that obviously. Um, you've got your complete trans transaction history. Right? Now this is what's good about it. What, what's good about coins? You can buy crypto very easy in Thailand. You can buy through your bank, right? Do a bank transfer online or whatever. You can do cash deposit machines or you can do over the counter purchases. Very easy to get involved. There's no, it's not complicated. People say to me, it's complicated. It's not. The complication is here where we put barriers in our own minds as to why we can't do it. I believe if I can get involved in Bitcoin, anybody can. The only question is whether you want to, that's it. But it's very easy. So you can buy, you can convert, as I said. So if you've got X amount of Bitcoin here, at any stage you can convert it to Thai Baht. You don't have to spend it, but it's there. So if you need Thai Baht, you've got it there instantly waiting for you. If you want to use that Thai Baht to buy more Bitcoin, it's there, but it's there. So I've always got a dual account there, crypto account and a Thai Baht account. And then more importantly, whenever you want, you can cash out. You can drop your type up down into your bank account, whichever bank account you've got registered with coins, it comes down. And the charge is 15 baht. 15 baht. I 25 baht for Bangkok Bank. Oh, 25 baht. Come to come to Cassico. All right, come to Cassico. All right. But I dropped down 200,000 baht the other day, 15 baht charge. Now, also, I'm going to talk about other accounts you can open, but I, I think that's very good. Now, People talk about security issues and things like that. There's security issues with everything, right? But no more so with crypto than with a normal bank account, or with having your wallet in your back pocket and walking somewhere, and all of a sudden your wallet disappears. So security is everywhere. But this is why coin, it's so easy to get involved. So that's really um, my bit of the crypto. That's part one of the crypto. Let me just go back. So I'm going to summarize. <coughs> Well, you can cash out. This is all coins. Now, coins is not the only one. But this is for Thailand. Now, we've got a lot of uh, countries here, so you, there are other exchanges. Now, I'd be true if I'm not quite sure what these are. What do you call these, Dan? Are these exchanges, or what is it? What do you call coins? Yeah. Coins is a payment company. Yeah, so that I happens know. to use crypto. Okay. So, take a note of that. Point. Coins is a payment company that just happens to use crypto. It's not an exchange. Right? So you could use that to pay. Right now, also, you've also got other companies. You've got Coinbase. Coinbase is a similar company for the UK. Okay, so uh, forgive me talking about this. I can only ever talk about me. I've got a Coinbase account that's linked to my UK bank account. So again, whatever I can do in Thailand from crypto and jump around, I can do the same in the UK. It also means I can move money from the UK to Thailand via this money in the air, via Bitcoin. Very low fees, instant, instant. Sometimes it slows down, depends on that Because I've got to watch what I say, I've got the Dan the man there, not in his neck, right? right. <coughs> uh, you've got Coin Jar. Okay, Coin Jar is ideal for Australia. Again, I've got a Coin Jar account into my Australian account. So you can play, so I can do exactly the same there. So it's just an alternative way of moving money around. You still, how many of us have got multiple bank accounts? And we transfer between bank accounts with whatever charges. There's no difference. There's no difference. It's just that it's all on the bank and I'm in control of my money. If I make a muck up, it's down to me. I don't have to rely on other people, but I can move money around very easy on my phone. I've got it all here. We've got Clever. Let me see. Clever, it's the wrong word. Over my phone. Hang on a minute. Oh, it says face not recognised. That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> my, my phone doesn't recognise me. Now I'm in problems, okay? And I'm talking about security, okay? But look, clever. There's my clever wallet, okay? And clever, clever app is so easy. It takes five minutes to open up a clever app, either on an Android or a Macintosh. Five minutes. And in there, You've got Bitcoin, you've got other coins, everything. So now I'm in total control of my money here. I can cash out, 
that and I just spoke there. It's gone up, it's gone down. I'm going to swing a little bit around. So as you get more and more involved, you can play around more in it. But, um, I'm a simple crypto man, right? I use crypto to suit me. I'm not a trader, but I have to say, uh, crypto has been very kind to me over the last six years. And it wouldn't have happened unless I have had a go, unless I've, unless I've got rid of all these, I don't know about it, but what's the problem? Was there security? I never asked any of those questions. Never asked. Because Richard Branson says, if you get off an opportunity, get involved and find out how to do it later. So who am I to sit next to this man that's offering me a career or an opportunity say, yeah, but hang on a moment, and what's this? And yeah, but I'm not happy about that. I'd still be where I was six years ago. I nodded. I said, fine, let's have a go. I smiled. I learned many years to smile and nod. And then that day I met Dan, and off we go to the races, as they say. So that's really my recommendation to everybody in the crypto world. Have a go. Have a punt. Don't put in more than you can afford to lose. This is Dan's mantra. Because crypto is volatile. It's not, there's no guarantee. If you've got a little bit left on the side that you can plow around with, my recommendation is throw it into crypto. Put it into crypto and forget about it. Or as Dan, it's funny because I've got to talk about Dan again. Dan's going to come up and talk about he is not a trader. That would have been true about two weeks ago. But as I understand it now, Dan is gradually becoming a trader, okay? Because you can get hooked on it. Because you go up, you can see it. It's a fantastic world. So anyway, so that's my part. Um, I'm going to introduce my partner, Dan the Man, all right, who's going to give the more detailed explanation. For those that want to get involved and trade, yes, is this a question? Yes. Can you, can you go back three or four slides where it talks about wallets? I, I opened an account with, with coins.co.th. Yes. Yeah. Um, go back to the, yeah. The thing is, you, you were talking about cryptos. Now, I think it's very confusing if you talk about cryptos with this company, because this company only deals with Bitcoin. Yes. It's the only thing they handle. Yes. So if you want to buy Bitcoin, that's the only company you can yes. go to in Thailand and get them. So when you see, go to the next slide of a minute. That's next my one. man. Next one. Now there's one that talks about BTC wallet. Yeah. And just think, no, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. Right, don't worry. Anyway, um, I did open an account and I, <laughs> I hit a real problem with their software because you have to do the know your customer bit, which is basically yeah. you have to take a photograph of yourself with a piece yeah. of paper that says, I want to join Coinbase. Yeah. It's today's date and your signature. And I got stuck on that link. And I ended up talking to the guy and going round and round in circles. And I, I walked away for a day. And eventually they wrote back to me and told me how to do it. And eventually I got in and I bought some crypto. Excellent. So good service support there from coins. Theirs is very good, yes. But the other thing is, what they recommend is that you transfer money into the Thai Barn account, first of all. Of course. And then, trans then buy yeah. your Bitcoin. Yeah, no, I agree. But thank you. Sorry yeah. for that. No, no, good. Okay. My question is, Oh, Dan can explain that. Dan, Dan will explain that, how, that, how that works. Let me just say, technical questions, go there. All right? How you open up an account, come to you. That's it. All right? But there, there, is, there is a charge, obviously. All right? One more. Is this a simple one? Done. Maybe. <laughs> Ought to be. It's okay. I've got a behind fast, How fast can I sell if I see it's up now? If I see it's up now and I yes. have spent 10-20% yes. and I want to sell and get my Bitcoin back on my account, how fast can I do it? Oh. No, I think that depends on what's going on on blockchain. Currently I've had no issues with, with speed at all. I did some yesterday, I transferred from, in fact I transferred some from my, can you answer the time? Yeah, while, you, while Dan's getting his mic on, just give an example, I transferred from uh, from my Clever wallet, some Tron, which is another token. I transfer Tron to Bitcoin, Bitcoin from here to my Coins account, and from my Coins account to my Cassie Corp account, all took 15 minutes. Now let me answer the question you asked though. 
the question you asked is, you have Bitcoin, let's, let's follow, let's just talk coins, coins.co.th. They are a payments company that you can buy and sell Bitcoin and then have Bitcoin sitting there, which means they control it, not you. And you can make payments, your electric bill, your true bill, your phone bill, all that kind of stuff. The way they work, if you log, if you, if, so you have a bit, let's say you bought a Bitcoin, and now it went up to 1.8 million baht, it hits about 60,000 US, and you said, oh, I wanna sell half my Bitcoin because I think it might go down, but I wanna follow the Ron rule, which is when it goes way up, cash out some, so if it crashed down to zero, you're still in profit, that kind of logic. At Coins, you just go in and say, please send a half a Bitcoin, from my Bitcoin account to my Thai bank account, KBank will use, they tell you immediately what the price is at that moment in time. You click send, and KBank, they charge 15 baht to cash you out. And then they tell you within a certain amount of time, the money will be in your account. So getting out with coins is effectively instantaneous. The issue, is not issue, the way they make money, they make money a couple ways at coins. If I go to coins.co.th, click, I would like to buy some Bitcoin. How much you want to buy? 100,000 baht. So I click, okay, I'm gonna buy 100,000 baht worth. How am I gonna pay? I'm gonna transfer from my registered KBank account. Click, I'm gonna pay with KBank. It adds a 1% fee. So it says, please send 101,000 Thai baht in the next hour and gives you all their banking details. And then when you're done, you say, okay, great. So I click that, now the clicker's going. <clears throat> and then I go to my online banking, we'll say I'm gonna do it that way, and say, cool, here's the, here's the account details, send 101,000 baht. You do it, then you go back into coins and say, paid. And then it asks you for the time stamp and I think it asks you one other thing from your transaction. And then that enables them to find your money and credit your Bitcoin. Now one thing for anybody that's never used coins before, they will give you a long time relatively that they promise it will be done. For instance, I'll do a withdrawal. My wife has this philosophy and she convinced me about this philosophy. Being married a few times, just you start learning. So. Her philosophy is, if you pay me in Bitcoin because I did work for you and I went traveling for you and I spent my Thai bot or put on my credit card, the minute that Bitcoin hits my account, it cashes out to my Thai bank account because I did work. So if I did 150,000 baht of work for someone, that's money not to be played with with the volatility of Bitcoin because Bitcoin was up to $58,000 and the low yesterday, it, it fluctuated between 58 and $48,000. So that's like 16%. So if I had 150,000 baht of Bitcoin as a payment for work I did, or worse, a reimbursement for travel expenses that I spent, it's not a good idea to wake up and lose 15%. So I just cash out and they say, Cash out is being processed and it will complete, it will be complete by tomorrow, approximately 24 hours from when you ask for it. It typically takes during their normal working hours up to about 10 p.m. The best I've ever done from receiving Bitcoin to cash in my bank account was 11 minutes. During normal working hours, worst case, maybe an hour. And if it's after 9 or 10 p.m., usually the cash out is in my account by, <clears throat> excuse me, nine o'clock in the morning. So don't be alarmed if when you use coins and you send them money to buy Bitcoin, you click on buying Bitcoin and it says, okay, pay by this much time, you're getting exactly this much Bitcoin, you'll have it by tomorrow at this time. It's usually way faster. And another thing, my recommendation, do not send them Tybot, let Tybot sit there and then try and buy Bitcoin. Don't do that. If you want to buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin directly from them. Just click, I want to buy some Bitcoin. 
because you'll forget about it. And here's the important thing. If you think now is a good time to buy Bitcoin, you know, it went down yesterday a bit and you'd want to buy right now. Well, if you just send Thai bot, you're not getting Bitcoin until they receive the Thai bot. Then you go back and say, please buy me some Bitcoin with my Thai bot balance. Whereas the minute I said I wanted to buy some Bitcoin, that 100,000 bot worth, they give me the price right then and I have an hour that I can have to pay. So I have an hour to actually make the payment because if you miss it, they don't want to, they don't want to take too much risk on slippage on the price. You know, they quoted me a price of this and they're taking the risk for the hour, right? That, it, that they're giving me to pay that Bitcoin could go down in the time frame of that hour. So that's why they, that, here's how they also make, make money on the spread, on the buy sell spread. And I'll show you the difference in a second when I talk a little bit about trading. Okay, I'm not a trader as in I don't look at charts and sit with four gigantic screens across the front of my desk, you know, Bitcoin here versus the dollar, this one here, this one here, looking and have all these measurements on the screen, RSIs and, and moving averages, and Bollinger Bands, all these kind of things you hear about in trading and looking like, oh wow, you know, this is happening here, this, this formation is happening. I think Bitcoin in the next six hours is going up. So let me buy some right now and maybe even use leverage. You know, so put a little bit and get 10 times leverage, which means I can lose my money faster too if it goes against me. And look at it and say, oh, okay, cool. And I'm gonna try and make 3% because I see that's happening. That, I don't do that. I mean, I look at the trends a bit, listen to a lot of people who know lots about and spend time looking at all those charts and then maybe make a decision that, you know, Today's a good day to buy Ripple. Actually, yesterday was a good day to buy Ripple, XRP, because of the modification of the lawsuit the US Securities and Exchange Commission has against Ripple over them being a security or not. So anyway, so you see that. Could have bought yesterday, it's up 18%, everything else is down. But I don't trade, in other words, I'm not a trader, day trader. Now, anybody wants to know how to execute trades, I can teach that to everybody. If somebody else says, hey, the right thing to buy today is Bitcoin because it's going up. And we think because of this reason, it's going to do this. It is volatile, so it might not go up. So you know, they'll say, for instance, buy Bitcoin at this price. X. Okay, Bitcoin, at, we'll do Thai bot. Bitcoin at 1.7 million Thai bot. And take profit. So the target for this person who did this analysis says you want to sell it at 1.8 million baht. So it's going to go up 50,000 baht. And stop loss in case it goes down of, I don't know, whatever you're comfy with, called 20,000 baht. So 1.7, 1,730,000 baht. I can teach you how to set that trade up on any exchange that supports that kind of trading. To tell you to figure that out, that today that's gonna happen, that's not my bank. Oh, what else about coins? Okay, so that's number one. Coins has a relatively large spread. And overnight and on weekends, it increases because they're open 24 seven for you to put in orders to sell and buy. But there ain't anybody there to execute. I mean, there's people there to monitor their system. So with that said, they're taking some risks. So you'll see the spread between the buy price and the sell price wide. The typical spread on coins is about 2.8%. So for instance, if you say, I want to buy some right now, we'll go look it up. We'll go look it up because I have the internet connected here. Still good? Okay, get back to the internet. Oh, oh, I forgot to do one thing. Brian, remind me later to this on the screen right now. Okay. So if I go to, if I go to coins, coins.co.th.
right now you'll see the buy is 1553 and the sell is 1495. That's 58,000 baht difference on 1.5 million, which is slightly less than 3%. So what this means, anybody who's interested in getting involved, which is a good idea, get some Bitcoin somehow, you will send them the equivalent of 1.553 million baht per Bitcoin, or fraction thereof, so that's the price. If immediately you said, oh, I don't really want this Bitcoin thing, I, 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 I want to cash out, you'll cash out for about 2.8, 2.9% less. That's where they make their money. Now, let's go to the next step. If I go here, talk a little bit about exchanges and trading. Here, here, here's why I'll show you this. That's not the only way to get Bitcoin in Thailand. That's not the only way to connect your bank account. That's not the only way to get access to this. There's multiple exchanges licensed by the Security and Exchange Commission that you can connect your Thai bank account to and buy Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin, buy or trade against other cryptos besides Bitcoin. And they have typically better prices. I'll show you. One of them, Zipmex. It's a relatively new exchange and a cool mobile app. <clears throat> now, it's a little harder, but not much harder. The thing that's crazy about exchanges is the first time you see a trading screen, if you've never seen it before, it is a little daunting, comparatively speaking, to coins. Coins is designed as a payments company and they're very good and they're very protective of their members. I'll never forget this years ago, at like midnight, we decided I needed to send five Bitcoin to somebody. So we're on a call and he said, hey, you need to send five Bitcoins, you gotta pay the developers for something because I had the Bitcoin in my account. So I click, send five Bitcoin here. And at that point, I think Bitcoin was about $3,500, maybe four grand, so it was like almost $20,000 equivalent. A little bit less than that because that was their limit. You now 600,000 baht was the limit. So it was, I don't know, three, four 400,000 baht worth. And I'm sitting there and they go, hey, we didn't get the damn Bitcoin. I said, it says processing, you know, in the little thing. It gives you exactly what's going on. It said processing, processing. So I sent in a message. I get up the next morning and I was coming down to Padia actually for a meeting. So I'm in the taxi from Bangkok, northern Bangkok, coming here. My phone rings. It was coins calling me. Hey, did you put in this big withdrawal request? I said, well, it's really not that big. But yeah, and I kind of needed it to go last night at midnight or whenever I sent it. They go, well, we got to make sure it's you that requested it. You know, we want to make sure you really meant to do it. This isn't a mistake. This wasn't somebody else trying to hack your system. You know, what day were you born? All the typical security questions they ask. What's your passport number? And, I, and then they finally said, okay, we'll let your transaction go through. And I said to them, what do I have to do next time so this doesn't happen? If you're going to do, they said, if you're going to do something out of the ordinary, you know, send a relatively large amount of Bitcoin or cash out a relatively large amount, especially during off hours. If you're going to do that, um, chat with us first and give us an alert. So they're very protective of you. But with that comes a cost. And here's the, the other point I'll make. Because some of you, how many people have heard of things called nano ledgers or trezors or hard or, or you know USB based wallets? Okay. One point. When you buy from coins and it says you have a third of a bitcoin, a tenth of a bitcoin, a bitcoin, you don't really have the bitcoin. They have the bitcoin. The actual control of that Bitcoin, third, a half, a full Bitcoin, is in Coins' name or in their wallet. You have a wallet address, but you don't have the private key. You don't have the ability to do a transaction. They have to do it, which means they're a good company. 
They're an ASEAN company because there's coins.co.my for Malaysia and PH for the Philippines. They are regulated, but they are still a private company. So you have to personally decide what you're going to do with your crypto assets, Bitcoin and the like. It's a personal decision. People ask me, should I get one of these Trezors, <clears throat> Nano Ledger S's, or X, or the new one, whatever? Should I keep my Bitcoin at Coins or Coinbase? Should I leave it on Binance? And here's my first question for everybody. Everybody who's thinking of getting involved needs to answer this question for yourself. <clears throat> Number one, what percent of your personal wealth is going into cryptocurrency? I always recommend, not everybody follows it, but I always recommend any money you're gonna put in crypto is money that you don't need. Nobody likes to lose money, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying that you know, you're gonna lose it, but it has to be money that's from the speculative portion of your portfolio. That's the first question you have to ask. Them. Here's why it's important. Back in late 2017, <clears throat> from August to the end of the year, Bitcoin went on a tear from like four grand to below, a little below 20, it hit 20 in December 2018. And then we had the crypto winter at the end of 2018, 2019, Bitcoin got down, you know, in the doldrums, six, seven, four, five. Then last year, 2020, March, it got as low as 3,100 bucks. Now, if somebody bought in at $20,000 ish, 198, 20, whatever, depends what country they're in, and they follow that bit of advice or rule number one of crypto and said, eh, it's okay, I believe that crypto and Bitcoin is going to be here for a long time. And my long term view, it's a 50, 100, 150, maybe even $500,000 thing. If that was their thinking, they bought it at 20 and held and watched it go down, they didn't freak out because they, the first, the corollary of the first rule is set it and forget it if, if you're doing it and you're not gonna actively look at it. Once it's there, pretend you don't have that money anymore. <clears throat> Those people are sitting pretty. Bitcoin, yeah, it crashed down a bunch, you know, overnight, you know, went from a high of 58, 59, almost 59, I think. And I think it's trading right now 53, 54, and it was as low as 48, so 10 grand. But call it 50, because I want to keep my math simple. What's a $30,000 return on 20 grand? A lot, right? That's 150%, right? You had 20, now you have 50 if you had a Bitcoin, and you bought it at the high, and you lived through all that in three years, about exact little bit over three years. So turn in. 20 into 50 over three years, that's a pretty darn good return, right? You know, 50, over 50% 50 a year in your original amount. For the guys who bought at the high and lived through the crash, you know, they're sitting at 250, you know, having 250% of the US dollar equivalent and having made 150%. The people who didn't follow that rule, what they do? Freaked out, right? And sold on the way down, took the loss at 18, <clears throat> took a loss at 16, or, or holding out for it to come back, took the loss at 10, or whatever, and they got wiped out, or at least that portion of their wealth got wiped out. So I always tell people, do not put money in crypto that you need anytime soon. Because I guarantee you that is the way for it to go down at the absolute worst possible time for you. For instance, you've been seeing all this stuff that's going on, right? And someone said, oh, cool, I've got $150,000 on put aside because I want to buy a new house. But I'm not buying the house for three more months. And you happen to say yesterday and you put 150 grand in and watch 20, almost 20%, 30 grand drop overnight. That would freak you out a little bit if next week you had to pay for the house. It's like, well, I don't have 150 grand anymore. I only got 120. So that's why you follow that rule. So again, just to summarize Ron's part, coins is relatively simple. Yes, getting KYC is a bit of a pain sometimes. I had trouble when they made me re-KYC because I, I exceeded some limits they have. <clears throat> and 
it took a while because the American passports, for some reason, are pretty darn shiny. So when you take the picture of the passport, their machine line, machine readers or whatever, the OCR thing, can't do it. No, it's not the reflection off my head, Frank. That's not nice, Frank. <laughs> Just remember this, bald dudes, this is a solar cell for a sex machine. There you go. Anyway, back, back to that. So I had trouble getting KYC. Other people have had trouble. My wife's been having a hard time with Bitazog, accepting her ID and all that kind of stuff. It, it, they're under a bit of strain right now, everybody and their brothers trying to get in. But it is easy other than the occasional glitch that you know they can't receive. So now here's an easy exchange to get into. It has a pretty simple interface just to show you the difference. So this is Zipmax. This is why I said if you've never seen any of these before, this could freak you out a little bit if I sent you here first compared to coins, yes or no? How many people think this is a little bit daunting? Most people, right? First time I ever saw it, I said, what the F is this? But it's actually not that difficult. Okay, I'll just show you what this is. This is TradingView usually, that's who most of the exchanges use for the graphics thing. And this lets you set, in other words, what time frame I'm looking. So I'm looking at 15 minutes. So this is in 15 minutes. But I could say I want to look at the one month look. So that's what one month of Bitcoin looks like here. And these little red and green things, they're called candles. All that means is red means during that 15 minute period, the price wound up down. And green means during that period, this happens to be six hours, sorry I'm looking at, during that period the price ended up. That's what red and green candles mean. And then how big they are is just relative to how much of a change. So, but for people who are just getting started, as an alternative way to buy Bitcoin, this is what I'm talking about, or buy other cryptos. So why would I do this versus coins? There's a couple of reasons. One, coins only let you do BTC. Maybe you read this stuff about this Ripple lawsuit and your friends tell you you should get some Ripple. Well, how am I going to get some Ripple when I only do Bitcoin there? So you're going to have to get to an exchange somewhere. So if you can sign up for an exchange and you can get Ripple here in Thailand, that makes it a little quicker and you don't have to pay the spread. You don't have that spread potential, the, the price differences in prices, and you don't have to take the Bitcoin you just bought in coins and send it some other place where you can trade to get Ripple, as an example. So Zipmax is in Thailand. Bad news is they don't take Americans. A lot of financial platforms don't want the hassle of dealing with Americans. So this is not my account, but my wife happens to be Thai, and, I'm tr and she's trustworthy. Anyway, so you see this one. This, this screen could freak you out some. This, she's the one that will spend less than me. The one, the one you got to watch out for in the mall is me, not her. Or Ron, if there's gadgets around. Uh, this part, you can ignore. I just want to buy some Bitcoin, right? So I'm clicking Bitcoin. Wow, it's below 50 grand here. See, difference in price. It was 1,553,000 baht, right? 1553. Five, that's over 50,000 US. That's about 51.5 ish. 52. It's almost $52,000. If I go over to Zenmax and I want to buy, if I click buy BTC, the current buy price, which means the lowest price somebody's willing to sell at, is $49,100. So if you're going to trade and you want to get the better rate, um, 49,100 is better than almost 52, it's almost 3,000 bucks, which is on 50, it's like 5% difference. So you're 5% ahead, 
if you buy here. But buying here is really easy. I want to put a new order in. Here's the price I want to pay, which is the current price I could get it at, I think. 306. Okay. How much I want to buy tells me how much in US dollars I'm buying. Then I just click buy. And you have two ways you can do orders on this exchange, market orders and limit orders. <clears throat> I'll just give you the very simple explanation. Market order means whatever the current price is in the market, I want you to execute my order, which is kind of what you do when you go to coins. Coins, when you go to coins, you don't pick the price, they tell you the price, and you just pay. So I look here and see what price, I, don't, I see what price it is approximately, based on what's in the order book. If I click buy on a market order, so I just put in how much I want to buy at market. And it will execute to get me my Bitcoin at the best available price in the market. And there's some other things that are interesting to look at. If you look here, over here, see where I am? This says somebody's willing to sell 0 0.133, 0 0.137, 0 0.17 now at 48,750. What this means when someone decides to go trade, the reason these numbers are important, I had a friend ask me, hey, I went on the exchange to buy X. I wanted to buy, forget Bitcoin, it was a smaller thing. I wanted to buy 4,000 or 5,000. So I put my order in to buy 5,000. I only got 3,000. Why? Because, unless you do it at market. If you do it at market, it'll just go through until it can fulfill your order. If you put it in what's called a limit order, which means at a price, you just pick a price that you're comfy, you say, if I'm willing to buy Bitcoin right now at $49,000. If that's your choice, you put it in at 49. If there's people willing to sell at 49, your order will execute. But the point is, there was only 3,000 of that coin available at the price he picked. And then he bought from that sub. So that's what this is showing right here. You know, at this price, there's this much available. At this price, there's this much available. If I want to buy five Bitcoin, I have to get my price higher in order to get people who are, have orders to sell who have enough Bitcoin to fulfill my five Bitcoin order, for instance. So this is why you got to understand this a little bit. But if all you want to do is buy some crypto that's on here at Zipmax, they also only trade um, against dollars or sing dollars. They don't trade against crypto for crypto. So basically you go in and out of, of your dollar wallet here is what they're showing, or US dollar teller, which is a dollar equivalent. Doesn't show you I can take my Bitcoin and buy Ripple, for instance. But the point I'm making, most of you who are just getting started, if you want a better price, go to an exchange like this and put in a market order and just buy at whatever the price is there. Because again, most people who are just getting started just want to get some. So Ron, of course, Ron's funny. We talk about this. I go, Ron, we just got money in. Uh, what's the exchange rate? He goes, I don't know. I go, what do you mean you don't know? The money came in, this is what we got. Who cares? And I'm like, yeah, you got a point there. If someone sends money to your bank account, to a bank account, you know, you're gonna get whatever rate the bank gave you. You know, when I go, if we're traveling, for instance, you know, I'll go use, um, well, here, what's it, TT Exchange, or I'll go to the airport, you know, Value Plus, or Super Rich, because you get a way better rate there than you get elsewhere. And if you're transferring more than a little bit of money, the percent, one percent, two percent matters. Ron's view of the world is it's easy. I want to have some Bitcoin. I'm not buying this Bitcoin or this Ripple or this Tron that he mentioned before with the idea I'm buying it at this exact price right now because I think it's going up tonight or tomorrow and I want to sell it and make a four percent profit because I'm actively trading. Because if you can make one, two, three percent every day of the week, and crypto's open 24-7, 365 days a year, if you can figure out how to make two, three percent every day and you compounded it, you'd have a ton of money if you knew how to do that. So 
paying 2.8% spreads means to make any money on his Bitcoin that he bought at coins, Bitcoin has to go up by more than 2.8% just to cover the spread. Which doesn't matter if you're talking in the big scheme of things, which is, we have this discussion, I've had this a long time, I used to do, used to do a weekly webinar on this. People would go, well, what do you think? What do you mean? Well, remember, first rule of crypto, it's your speculative money. Number two, Bitcoin. Okay, this is when Bitcoin was lower. Bitcoin's at you know, 55,000 bucks, all kinds of institutional people, companies are in Bitcoin. You know, Tesla bought a billion five worth and has made more money on their Bitcoin purchase than they made in 14 years of making and selling cars. Their profit, because they bought in actually around 33. They announced it when it was 40 something, but they actually bought that Bitcoin at 33,000. So at 15,000, 50,000 ish, you know, that's um, 17,000 of Bitcoin profit on that. That's, you know, more than a 50% increase. That's like two thirds it was up. So they made a billion in profit just on the Bitcoin holdings. They haven't made a billion in profit making and selling cars in 14 years. So you have all kinds of institutional things coming. You have all kinds of new tools to make it easy for regular people to get into this. These wallet things weren't this easy when Ron and I got involved years ago. It was much harder. It's much simpler now. So my view of the world is at some point in the not too distant future, 18 months, three years, five years, you know, Bitcoin's 150, 250, half a million bucks. If Bitcoin's at 50 and you buy in, it could crash down a bunch. But all these institutional guys ain't stupid, number one. Number two, they have almost more money than God. So they're not getting into Bitcoin to lose money. And they have more than enough money to do things to ensure two things. One, they get in at the best price and the price goes up. Because again, Bitcoin just passed $1 trillion market cap. That's all Bitcoin that's been created times the price of Bitcoin exceeded a trillion dollars for the first time a couple of days ago. Now, that's a big deal in crypto. In the big world, that ain't much of a big deal when Apple's worth over two trillion. If you take Apple, Microsoft, and Google, they're worth like five and a half trillion. Just three companies are worth, you know, five X the total value of all Bitcoin that's been created. And plus, there's probably three and a half to four million Bitcoin that's lost forever just because people had them on hard drives when they weren't worth anything and lost those hard drives. Or the joke is, remember, I think I gave it in one of the presentations, the guy who bought two pizzas for 20,000 Bitcoin, 10,000 Bitcoin each. Someone said, what happened to him? Well, he's got rid of the Bitcoin. The better question is, what happened to the company or the guy who took the Bitcoin for those pizzas? Because 20,000 Bitcoin right now is what? Two billion? No, one billion. Yeah, something. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Fifty thousand bucks a piece. Yeah, a thousand Bitcoin is fifty million. So twenty times fifty million is a billion. Crazy money. So two pizzas sold in two thousand eleven, I think. That the money's worth over a billion. So on on this exchange stuff, don't freak out if you see this. Um, there's there probably I think there's ways. I haven't played with Zipmex too much. Um, there's probably a way to not see this and just see the order book. But all your, and a lot of exchanges like Binance, for instance, has a quick buy capability. So you don't see any of this stuff. You click quick buy, what do you want to buy? And presuming you have the money sitting in your account already, you just buy it. So that makes it, makes it simpler. Because again, this kind of a screen for someone that's never seen anything, you know, could be a little bit daunting or maybe a little scared to do. Last comment I'll make on, on control. Ron, Ron made this comment, says, hey, you're your own bank, you're in control. Now, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, but that's also a bad thing. Because right now, for instance, you go in your Bangkok bank app, I use my Bangkok bank app, I want to transfer some money. 
So I just click in, oh, I want to transfer, here's the account. I wanted to transfer 20,000 baht, click, type it in, accidentally type 200,000, click confirm because I'm in a rush. Then I get my little message, you just transferred 200,000 baht to Ron Cardi. And I went, what? I meant to send them 20. But there's a little thing that says, call us if there's any problem with this transaction. So you can get that transaction undone by the bank because they're a central authority. They will undo it. In the crypto space, in Bitcoin, if I have Ian's Bitcoin address and I don't copy paste it, I try and type something or I'm rushing and I accidentally change the last digit from a six to a five. Well, God only knows if that address really exists, but I sent the Bitcoin to that address. It is irretrievable. Now, if I send it to Ian and I sent him 200,000 baht and I use his correct address when I meant to send him 20, I say, hey, Ian would know, and he knew he got it from me because he knows my address. He, he would send it back because I know him. So I could get him to send it back, but he doesn't have to. And that's a good case. Now, here's a bad case. I sent it to Ian's old address. Ian stopped using that address because Ian had trouble with his authentication stuff to access that address. So he can't access that address. Yes, it was his three months ago, but he has no way to get into that wallet. That Bitcoin is in limbo. It's sitting attached to his address that nobody has access to. So you do have control, but you also have responsibility. So just, just to close my comments, you can get better pricing on exchanges. It's a little harder in a sense because you can see a screen like that that's a little different than coins. But the sign-up's the same, name, address, passport, selfie, hold up. Some of them say, you know, put your name and today's date and the name of the exchange, holding your ID so we can see both so they know that you are you. Same basically as, as coins or any of the ones that aren't exactly exchanges. And then just click simple market buys if you need to buy or simple market sell when you want to sell if you want to use it simply. But the advantage of having these exchanges is I would like to get something other than Bitcoin. There's lots of ways to do it, but being in Thailand, we have good access. You know, we can connect your Thai bank account as a foreigner. Um, as an American, it's hard. Coins will take you. Sipmex won't take you. Bitcub won't take you. Uh, so, something Soprong or something my wife just signed for won't take Americans because they don't want to do the reporting to the U.S. government. So with that, I will remind everybody, only put the speculative money into crypto. So when it goes down 15 or 17 percent overnight, you do not freak out. You think, aha, it is on sale. Let me go buy some more. That's, that's how you have to look at it. If it's money you need this week, do not put it in crypto. I don't care your friend said it's a sure thing. I mean, I had a bunch of money. I could put it in all in Bitcoin when it was at 11. You know, and I would have 5x that amount of money, but I needed the money for something, so I didn't do it. One time I followed my own advice, it bites me in the butt. Anyway, with that, let me open it up to any questions. Go ahead. I've got questions. Um, can you? That's better. Okay. A couple of questions. Uh, one is, if you if you uh, use Zitmex, can you withdraw your Bitcoin from another exchange? Okay. Here's how it works. Zitmex is an exchange. If I go, all right. Let me log back in. Hold on. I'll show you. Let me log back in. It's not that low tech. See where it says wallets? Bitcoin. 
all exchanges work basically this way. So this account, I click on Bitcoin, I go over here, I click deposit, then I say show deposit address. There's my QR code, or I can get the actual address right here. I go to my other exchange, copy, click copy. I always know everybody use copy, so now this has been copied to the clipboard. I go to coins, for instance, if I have some Bitcoin there, click withdraw or send to, depending upon who, you know, how they've chosen to do their user interface, paste that address, and then click whatever they make you click to approve your transaction, and now the Bitcoin will move from that place to here. That isn't, that isn't the question I asked, that's a transfer. So I was asking, can you actually access it from, Bit, from, from coins initially? Can you, use, can you access your, your Bitcoins if it's a dollar or a currency from any exchange? No. Uh, so, so that, no, in other words, so, so, so that, in other words, you have, if I have Bitcoin here, actually BitMEX has my Bitcoin. Yeah. So, so I can only access it through the BitMEX app or through their web interface, period. I've got that. So now the next question is, if you go to a bank, a normal bank, I'm a bit cynical as you can gather, but if you go to a bank, you're protected by some extent by your the, the government's legal institution. If you go to a bank, you are covered by uh, by local regulations. Correct. And in the UK, if a bank collapses, I'll get something like eighty percent of well, up to eighty thousand pounds of my uh, my savings back from the government. What type of comeback have you got on these if, if that exchange goes down? Not much. It's a private company. This is not a bank. Now they're licensed by the SEC. They're supposed to have security things. I haven't studied the security the the law. So I don't know the absolute answer um, of what liability they'll take or don't take. Yes, Ian. I bought my original coins two or three years ago from bx.co.th, which was bx.in.th, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yep. And they've gone. Correct. But when I bought them, I was very nervous about leaving it on the exchange because I read so much about people hacking exchanges. So I put it onto a an Analyzer Howard wallet. Correct. And I still have them. Yep. And Morris' question that he asked me before, and I didn't know the answer is, where does all the money go? What do you mean, where does all the money go? When you buy, you put Tybar into a, a crypto. Okay, so, okay, here's what happens. I go to this, I go to Zipmex and say I want to buy a Bitcoin. And Zipmex says it's 1,500,000 bucks. So I deposit million five hundred thousand in Zipmex's bank account. So they have the money. So it's sitting there. It sits in their bank account and then they put they allocate me one Bitcoin like a bank on my online banking. Until I go withdraw it, um, they don't actually deliver me the Bitcoin. You understand my point? Yeah, so they got the money. So I mean if you go back they got to the Bitcoin money, too. <laughs> Yeah, but if you go back to my example, I transferred it out Correct. onto a hard wallet. Correct. But that money's not sitting on my hard wallet. It's no, it's not money. Out. You have Bitcoin. They have fiat. You sent them a million five. You sent them back. We'll say you sent them fifty thousand, five hundred thousand baht for that Bitcoin. They owe you a Bitcoin, and in your back office it says under your Ian Nicholson account you have one Bitcoin. You click withdraw and send it to the address of your ledger, because that's what you're doing, then they, out of their wallet, send one Bitcoin to that address. I mean, technically, no Bitcoin gets sent anywhere. It's just the notification of who's the owner of that Bitcoin. But that transaction is a real transaction on the blockchain that one Bitcoin moved from the control of the exchange, or yeah, BX.IM was an exchange, to your address. So at that moment in time, you are in total control yourself of that Bitcoin. So that was a smart thing to do. Very smart move. So. But they notified the world that they were not going to be SEC thing, and if you you would have gotten tons of notifications, they weren't going to steal your Bitcoin. They did not just close up shop one day and bugger off with everybody's money. One coin that was a Ponzi scheme illegal deal. So how would you know which is which? 
um, research, due diligence. First rule of crypto also, if you're talking MLM kind of things or investing kind of schemes, if you send your money to them and it's crypto and they promise you a guaranteed percent return per day, run like hell because you just participated in either purchasing an illegal security or you're participating in a Ponzi scheme. Simple as that. Anybody, can, Nobody can guarantee anything. Things go up. I mean, if I was guaranteeing you 2% a day, Bitcoin went down 17% last night. How the hell am I paying that 2% guarantee? Because I sure as heck didn't make it. Anyway, so stay away from any of those. Yes, Brian. Right. Right. Yeah. right, you mentioned about uh, Elon Musk buying, I think you said, uh, 100 billion? No, Elon, Elon Musk, actually, he didn't do it. Tesla did. Okay, Tesla. Tesla bought 1.5 billion US dollars of Bitcoin last month. Right. You say they bought. Where did they get the money from? Their cash reserves. No, they have got no cash reserves. Then they borrowed it. Okay. Where from? Whomever lends them money, their banks, most likely. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, uh, my, my core of digest told me this morning that they had not bought Bitcoin. They had requested a reserve on it. I don't know how you can request a reserve. Well, this is what Cora Digest informed me this morning. Who? Q O R A. Cora. Cora Digest. Okay, yeah, Cora is so the, the people writing things, answering right. questions. Yep. Okay, well, they say. I'd be surprised, this is just my opinion. Um, Tesla is a publicly listed company. If they say they bought Bitcoin publicly, they bought Bitcoin or else they're in a world of hurt. They are only reported to have bought Bitcoin. Yeah, that's true. Okay. We'll go have to see. We'll have to go see the tra you can, yeah. the transactions are, would be visible anyway. So that's a that's a I'll go check it out. Check it out. That's a good one. Yes. Turn the mic on. Turn the mic on. Yeah, it's very good talk. There we go. We're all looking for ways to make some easy money, and that's, that's life, and that's a fact. There's so many different ways of investing money, so you've got to try and make your money any same as you've got work. That fact's accepted. Uh, Bitcoin, to me, is just another one. You can get, A few people get very rich on it, but many more people lose money on it, is what I think. And, and uh, There's one key difference. I mean, if you take gold, for instance, Five years ago, you could borrow three hundred dollars. It's now six times that price. So, okay, if you sell at the right time, you can make money. There's a key factor with gold and Bitcoin. I've been into shares most of my time, and I've done very well with it. But a key factor there is they are paying a dividend every year. You're having income. So, there's no with Bitcoin and gold. Your thousand pounds you spent ten years ago is maybe worth two hundred pounds now in buying power. There's no, there's no dividend or in bank interest to keep up with inflation. So you've got to take that factor into your account. If, if I bought Bitcoin for £1,000 five years ago, and I sell it today for £1,500, oh, I've made 500 No, you've not made 500 with inflation. That's Correct. the key thing with the difference between shares. And, and with shares, I can... We see between share. some shares, not every company. Basically, well, well, that's up to you again to... Uh, other investments, if you like. But with the shares, I can put the price for two pounds. I can say I want to buy at this price, and they'll sit there for three months if you want. And it will not do the transaction until you know, it reaches that price. It doesn't reach that price, you've lost two pounds. And it doesn't matter how much you wanted to buy. So there are many, many advantages to that. And I'm very happy with the, the share. I'm not knocking Bitcoin. I'm just saying you have to be aware of the fact a little bit that um, it, there's no dividend, there's no interest and in inflation, the money you're spending now will be worth just take a coconut, it was 10 baht when I came here, it was 50 baht now, you know so. Oh yeah, no, you're, that is a very important point that everybody who's investing in anything has to take into account inflation, 
or the fact that they just all keep printing money, which is why people are going to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, there will only be 21 million created, period. It's going to take until about 2040 to get the last ones mined, but that's how it is, and that's why people like Bitcoin. The government doesn't control Bitcoin directly. 21 million is all there's going to be, so it is deflationary, not inflationary. But yeah, you have to take that into account. Yes, Gary. Yeah, hi, Dan. Um, with the coins.co Thailand, yes. um, you, you talk about the 3% spread. If you withdraw Bitcoin to your wallet, you know, a, a Trezor or something, do you pay half of that or do you still pay the full 3%? No, you, know, you don't you pay any of that. So you only pay 1.5% approximately? When you no, you pay, pay if, okay, that's to be clear. Coins has a buy-sell spread. So the price you buy at is higher than the price you sell at. And they're way, they're about 20 to 30,000 baht worse than like BitMEX, and they're like worse than that on the sell side. If you buy some right now, that's your Bitcoin, you tell them, please withdraw it to my ledger. You'll pay the blockchain withdrawal fee, and you pick, there's low, medium, and high, depending on how fast you want it to go. And that's like, Depending upon what you pick and what's happening, you know, five bucks, seven bucks, ten bucks to move it. But there is no spread because you just have the Bitcoin. Right, so effectively, if you, if you buy Bitcoin and then sell it back for cash, you're going to pay the full commission, aren't you? Correct. But if you just move the Bitcoin, you're only paying half of it? or, or Well, if you move it, you're not paying anything. You bought Bitcoin at whatever the buy price is. Okay. But their buy price is 3% approximately higher than the price you can sell it for. Okay. Whereas if you go on Zipmax or BitCub or BitTaza, all these are exchanges in Thailand, um, the spread between the buy-sell price is a fraction, yes, a dollar is. maybe. Yes, it is, but it's vastly more complicated. Um, second question is, I had Bitcoin a few years back, the end of December of December 2019, yep. uh, in Coinbase, and I wanted to sell. And the problem is, um, you, you put in your request and it says, due to the high volume of requests, we're unable to process your transfer or your exchange, whatever you want to call it. Now, how do you get around that? Because I had to wait and wait so all the time the coin is coming down to the point where I didn't want to sell it any longer. Well, welcome to the wonderful, wacky world of Coinbase. So how do I avoid? You don't. Move. Oh, here's what you do. How do you avoid all that? The minute you buy it, you move it to a wallet you are in total control of. Okay, got it. Okay, that's all. Because I haven't seen problems like that, I haven't heard, like coins, I haven't ever run into a problem with cash now, but they have limits, you can only cash out in and out fiat, 600,000 baht a day, depending on how much it is. But coins has got huge volumes, not coins, Coinbase, and that has happened in the past. You know, when it's going up, not too hard, but you're trying to sell at a high price and everybody wants to sell, they don't have the liquidity, that's the real answer. And you need to go on an exchange. So you're in Coinbase's wallet, Thing. You need to move, you should should have moved it to Coinbase Pro, which is their exchange. Yes, Steve. Dan, um, you mentioned that there was a maximum number of Bitcoins that would be mined. Correct. Which was? 21 million. Right. How is that figure derived? The people who invented Bitcoin in the algorithm said that 21 million is the max when they wrote the algorithm to create and run Bitcoin. Right, and the second part of the question is, what does mining mean? Okay, mining. Okay, I'll explain it. Blockchains have various ways they can work. Bitcoin is a coin that is, quote, mined. Miners basically are people with computers who are solving the cryptographic equations to run the Bitcoin network. So we could all have our own ant miner, mining computer designed specifically to mine Bitcoin. And all of us are competing. We're plugged into the wall. We're running the algorithm, trying to compete to who's gonna solve the equation first and then get the ability to quote, mine the next block, which means I'm gonna carry everybody who's trying to send some Bitcoins transactions 
and then I get a reward. I get rewarded when I solve it before everybody else. I, I get to, to create the block, which is his transaction, his transaction, all these transactions to, to put them on the blockchain. And for doing that, for solving it and beating everybody else, I A, get fees, and B, I collect a block reward, which is currently, I believe, 6.25 Bitcoin per block. So every, every single approximately 10 minutes, 6.25 Bitcoin are created right now. Way back when it was 50. And the algorithm, after ever, so many blocks, cuts the reward in half. So it was 12 and a half, and it was 25, before that it was 50, and as more and more get created or mined, less rewards. This is why they were saying, remember when, if anybody was reading it, you know, paid attention to these things, when Bitcoin prices hit three grand, four grand, not profitable to mine because the cost of the electricity, cost of the electricity was greater than the cost, than the reward based on how many, how often they could hit a block and collect that Bitcoin. Um, the rewards versus the costs weren't there, and huge amounts of capacity were taken out of service. People were selling these mining machines for next to nothing because at the time they were losing money by operating them. Um, Ian has suggested we continue with this rather than open forum. It's getting on for one o'clock. Yeah. Oh, okay. Having bought uh, bitcoins, uh, there are now a few businesses which accept bitcoin instead of money. Correct. Uh, how does that work? That is one question. Second question is. Uh, are these exchanges, are, are there any exchanges which provide some sort of a hedging against volatility, like options strategies, for example, put or uh, call options? Number three is uh, you, you, you are company 3T Networks. Yes. Uh, how does it how does it add uh, value on services, etc.? Well, uh, let me just do something. Okay, let me see. Your first question again was? Uh, paying in Bitcoins. Paying in Bitcoins. Paying in Bitcoin, right. Okay, number one, I want to pay in Bitcoin. Some businesses in their point of sale systems can accept Bitcoin. So they said, I've connected up my point of sale. So let's say um, the hotel here wanted to accept Bitcoin. So they connect up their payment system to a Bitcoin account they have. And I say, oh, I'd like to pay in Bitcoin. So they click Bitcoin, and up pops a QR code. I take my Bitcoin wallet, whichever one I have, I scan that QR code that says, basically, please send me 27,000 Thai body equivalent of Bitcoin, and click OK. And out of my Bitcoin wallet, I just sent them the payment, and now they have it in their Bitcoin wallet. So that's how payments basically work. There's point of sale terminals built to handle that kind of stuff directly, or there's companies like BitPay and Coin Payments that allow you to add cryptocurrency, not just Bitcoin, payments to your offering, so somebody can pay you in crypto. That was question one. Question two, things like options, hedging, and all that. This is the top exchange in the world, Binance. So you can buy crypto, bank deposit, credit, debit card, peer-to-peer -peer trading, which means somebody personally selling it to you, and they take Paxos. Got markets, which are all the trading markets, just like I showed you in Zipmax. They have all kinds of trading. Okay, see, here's the things I was talking about. You know, if you want to not mess around with looking at charts and stuff, you can, instead of just trading, you click convert, and you just say, I want to go, I have some of this, and I want to turn it to this, and presto change it does it. You don't have to worry about market buy, limit, any of that kind of stuff. So they, they built that in to make it easy. Now you brought up derivatives. These guys have futures, margin, leverage, up to 125% x, 125x leverage. You can margin tokens, you can buy and sell options. There are tokens that have leverage. There's games you can play. So a lot of these companies have added all those kinds of things. It's actually the sign of a maturing market. I'll never forget this. There's a guy we used to work with who talked about the fact that 
in crypto up until a couple years ago, you could only buy and expect it to go up. And that's how you could make money. But in sophisticated financial stuff, people want to bet it's going to go down. You want to be able to make money when it's going up or going down. So they put in the futures markets you can bet with for Bitcoin and others. And now all these exchanges, especially the big ones, they offer these kind of products. You can make money when it goes up, when it goes down. You can use leverage, which is good and bad. If it's going up and you bet it was going up, leverage is a good thing. If it goes the opposite way, you can quickly get wiped out, at least the amount you were risking. Question over here. Oh, okay, Steve. Um, is it true that in certain cold countries they have warehouses full of these mining computers? No, no, it's serious. No, that's one hundred percent correct. The price, the price of electricity is the key component in the profitability of mining because mining uses lots of electricity. I mean, the only guys that are doing serious mining are people that have warehouses full or containers full of computers, all networked together, all working, solving this cryptographic stuff so that they can win the race to get the next block and get the block reward. <clears throat> so cold countries or countries that subsidize power are good places to mine for crypto. Plus, cold countries, you don't need air conditioning because these things are noisy and they are hot. Yeah, we have a question back there. Yeah, I have three questions actually. Uh, number one, how about taxes in Thailand and uh, if you have profit in crypto and when when you have to pay for it, how much it is and so on? I believe they tax it like income, so when you sell, you're liable. How close they check? What'd you say Ian? 10%. 10 Same as dividends. They treat it like a dividend. That's question one. Okay, and how and how you you have to report it specially, right, or something from uh, you have to keep from a ledger of what you sold or you bought from the Bitcoin or you're, if, if you're going to report, sure, that's what you have oh, to okay. do. Okay, got it. Number two question is: there are hundreds and thousands of uh, cryptocurrencies. Eight thousand eight hundred pairs okay. or so right now. Now. Uh, of course, you won't if you if you buy some and you want to hold them, you'd like to put them in a wallet, either a hardware wallet or a software wallet. But a lot of those wallets don't don't take all of them or even part of them. What Correct. Do you, what do you do with the ones you cannot get into a wallet? There is some wallets that will take the ones you want, and there are other wallets that take the other ones. I mean, this is one of the complications of crypto as you get into things below the top 10 or top 15 or top 50 cryptos is wallet A. Like if you look at this Clever wallet, it doesn't take everything. It takes Tron and Tron-based things. It has most of the major blockchains, but that's it. So <clears throat> if you want to take Ethereum-based tokens, you use an Ethereum-type wallet that can basically cover Ethereum and everything. If you want Bitcoin-related things, blockchain, if you want Tron-based things, you use that. You get, you're going to get stuck with mobile wallets. So if you do, you have any, do you have any to recommend which can kind of cover most of those altcoins or anything like that? Do you have any experience in that? Yeah, a couple of the good wallets. You know, there's Exodus Wallet. There's Trust Wallet. They control, they do a lot of them. It all comes down to what, well, they don't have a wallet, though, per se. They're an exchange, so you're not in control of your crypto when you're working with Binance. But Trust, Exodus, those are two of the big ones. Okay. You know, on your computer, you can add MetaMask, which gets you all the Ethereum ones. It's a browser extension. Okay. okay. One more question. Stock market, let's say, opens 9.30 in the morning in New York. Uh, uh, like cryptocurrencies, they trade 24-7. 24 when you're showing, let's say, some of the graphs, and it shows 24-hour candles or whatever, what time of the day does it start? Do you know? It depends on where the exchange is, I believe. A lot of them try and use like GMT for their reporting. So what? Uh, UK time. But I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't okay, checked okay. that. I just was curious because I see it sometimes just starting to show how it goes out in the first 20, 24 hours and I just never know if it's in US and it's midnight or if it's here and it's one o'clock in the afternoon or what. So, okay, uh, no answer. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. And you said 21 million Correct. Bitcoin. Where are we now? Where are we now? About 18.7. So what's going to happen when 21 million coins have been mined? Most of us in the room will be and dead. <laughs> That'll be a problem for our children and the, grandchildren. The state of Ohio, to take an example, is um, one of the latest customers of Bitcoin. Yeah, I'll, answer the, I'll, so, I'll give you the straight answer to the question, not the jokey one. Okay, when Bitcoin, when the 21 millionth coin is mined, then the whole network switches over to transaction fees to support it. That's how it's designed. So the transaction fees will get paid to all the folks with the computers that are solving the cryptography, but there will no longer be block rewards because the last block that has a reward would have been money. So the transaction fees will cover all the costs at that point, which means transaction fees will be relatively high. Go ahead, Ian. Go back to your question about uh, different kinds of wallets. I can give you an example. I bought Bitcoin from coins. I have a nano ledger and I couldn't transfer it in. So I spoke to Dan and Dan recommended blockchain wallet. Yeah, that's a good Bitcoin one. It actually supports Ethereum yeah. and others. So I, I transferred it into there and then I could transfer it from there into my other wallet. But I left it in there because. You don't want to pay two fees. Yeah, exactly. So blockchain wallet is a very well respected, highly secure. Soft wallet, I suppose you'd call it. Yeah, because it runs on your phone or on your computer. You can, I believe, probably connect the ledger to it, maybe. I mean, just like I talked about MetaMask, there's also My Ether Wallet, um, which is another wallet program that you can use, but you can also connect some of these to these hardware wallets and use just use it as an interface. Question, Ryan. Right? No question. We're coming up to time when Perfect. we wind it up. People keep saying they don't want these talks, and yet when we do, we never end. <laughs> well, no, this one was more educational on the nitty gritty really how to go do this stuff. Really no. good, really good. Excellent. Okay, there we are again. And Ron, let's not forget Ron. Excellent. I know Open Forum has had to. Is there anything urgent that you want to ask? Please do so. But we have to have the draw for this, uh, um, the draw for next week's, where did I put it on? In next week's entry for breakfast for the free breakfast. The happy winner, 0162, 0162. 0162.